I eighty four got closed. Yeah, I need to switch all the traffic. Stupidest thing. I need to tell truckers you can't do this. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they had trees down. So close, close for a day and a half, 26. Oh, and 26 you know, was down for a day and a half? Yeah. Well, we also hours. ended up getting a foot of snow and roadie that was not in the forecast. Well, that was the other thing I, I heard, because I've been up there skiing a couple of times over the lake. And, so, wow. Oh, that doesn't have enough employees to keep. Well, a foot of snow in how much time though? Like a day? They've, they've had that before. We, they, they don't, they're down like 30, 40%. Yeah. In employees. Oh, okay. That, that ran by about probably five, six hours. And then today, it's supposed to be 40 degrees and rain, welches, snowing, and it's, I call it slushing. Oh, yeah. hold on. That's my speakers. Today to uh, dig out my parents' car so they could come home. Yeah. Because that's how buried it was. And where did they live? Well, I have this in government camp. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but was there a truck or something also that?
All right, great. All right, bye. Hannah, can you shut my door? Thank you. Stay down. You gotta stay down. Stay down. Thank you. Oh, I was on. No, I thought I was on mute, but I'm not. Oops. There's Bill. There we go. Chris, can you hear us? Bill, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Chris, <laughs> thumbs up, can you hear us? Okay, good. Ernie, are you there too? Can you hear us? Yes, I am. All right, All right. excellent. <clears throat> All right, well, why don't we get going? And I was just starting to mention, uh, we're gonna kind of go quickly through this and, and focus on the, the, the RP that uh, got there. Sorry, we didn't get that out sooner. We'll work better on getting that information out um, uh, a full week in advance and apologize for all that. Um, I'll just give you an update for myself. I I'm, uh, have some things with work that um, has been Taking a lot of my time, and uh, you know this employee shortage thing, and people like taking on other jobs. It's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> people transitioning. I know, Craig, you know this from maybe not your work, but at least from the school board's point of view. Yeah, it's um, bad everywhere. And so um, my CIO is <clears throat> taking a different gig. Um, actually, he's uh, going to take a pay cut and and. Uh, Spend time more with his uh, three-month-old son, and uh, I have to drive across the river and, mm -hmm. and everything else uh, for himself personally, and and uh, a few others. So um, taking on uh, those responsibilities at work uh, madly, uh, trying to do more than one job. But I know we're all there, and it's not just. I'm just giving you a perspective for myself. So I know how it goes with trying to hire people and and uh, across the board and. Um, Paul, I don't know if you're having a hard time hiring people or not. <laughs> well, we're, I mean, our people, for the most part, are saying it's just new people. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially we're buying aquatics, um, mm -hmm. swim lessons. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could run 100 kids a month through no problem. We just can't get anyone. Yeah. And we've increased their pay rate 50%. Wow. Wow. You're yeah. kidding me. And, they, and you're still on the Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I know you've had other people leave uh, just getting more money to work remotely from home, never have to go in the office. They're going to move cross country, you know. So they keep going to whippersnappers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one thing you can't yeah, well, you can play with uh, the slides and uh, play balls and things and that. But um, so we'll kind of quickly go through there, but um, we'll just do a quick check in. If you don't have anything, no big deal. Um, and we'll just kind of move on and kind of get down just to some updates and go through that RP, which is really what we want to focus on today. Um, so we can kind of, if there's any edits and those type of things and give you time to kind of look at those over. Any suggestions, we can get that out there and, and publish so we can uh, start that process. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway. Just, uh, for, just so, uh, for everybody's um, information, the timeline on this is, um, I'm really hoping to get this RFP. This RFP is pretty much done. There's a few, I left all the, the legal boilerplate and everything out at the end of it because it's not really germane to our discussion tonight. But um, um, it's pretty much ready to go. I think 30 to 45 days, and we should be able to get some responses on this. I'm required to put it out um, on, uh, I'm required to po uh, post it publicly. There's two companies that I'm going to um, reach out to personally. One of them is the company that presented to us. The other one is uh, Eco Northwest, who we've worked with a lot. And then we may get one or two other companies. So, like that. so before we jump into that, we'll go ahead and um, just kind of any check in any reports that anybody wants to give around the. Hans, how, how are things going over at uh, Whippersnap? We're climbing the hill. Good. So it's good. Excellent. Yeah, weekends are doing pretty good. Midweek still hit or miss, slow. Um, we don't have enough employees to be open all the hours that we could, but yeah. that's okay. I mean, we're, we're seven days a week, but um, yeah, still looking for employees. Well, I know the, the parents of Sandy are probably very relieved that you're open seven days a week. I've heard that a few times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, how are things going down at the, at the brewery? Uh, 
you know, they're slowly starting to come back. I just looked at the end of the year report and we're down 35% over the last two years, which is kind of rough, but, uh, you know, I've got a, I've got a good staff. I'm actually, I'm not there this evening because I'm in isolation at my house. Oh. I've been sick since new year's Eve and I couldn't get a test or anything. So we don't know if I have COVID or not, but I seem to be on the men. So that's okay. Regardless. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's still rough out there. Um, winter break has been good because people have been playing up at the mountain. The highway shutting down isn't good, but you know, <laughs> that doesn't happen that often. So we're, we're, we're like, kind of like Han said, we're slowly climbing back up. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Bracci, how are things going at ADC? Uh, things are going well. Um, we did have some hiring difficulties in the uh, fourth quarter of last year. Uh, we had had some uh, departures from some folks, and then we were trying to replace them, and uh, that was a bit of a, of a challenge. Um, so we have extended our reach, our outreach for uh, employees because of the remote work uh, to where we're actually hiring folks that are working from even as far away as South Carolina. Wow. We, like to, we like to keep people closer, but uh, we have, uh, we've had, we've picked up a couple of uh, long distance uh, folks like that. Our sales, uh, I just, I got a, a little peek today at uh, what the year end is going to look like. And um, it's not bad. We're just a little over three and a half million in sales. Um, that's obviously down from two years ago, but uh, uh, that's not bad for, for a year where things are still um, kind of iffy and bouncy out there in the market. But uh, we are continuing to um, um, very actively uh, get the marketing and sales activity up. And so that's, 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 that's good. And uh, we look, we're looking forward to this new year. Excellent. Ms. Jones, how are things at the chamber? Things are going good. Um, we had our business recovery center contract with the county extended through the end of March. Um, we're still working on the ARPA funding that Senator Thompson sent to us or earmarked us for um, looking like we're just going to have to be a contractor, not a subcontractor for it. So that's going to make the process a lot easier. Um, yeah. Still not sure when we'll get those funds in hand to be able to help the businesses and to start doing grants and stuff with the businesses. But um, it's coming together. So that's encouraging, too. Um, we launched our, we're calling it Workforce Wednesday. So our job board postings, um, I think Shannon said we're on week 10, I think of that. Um, so if you have, anybody has any employees they need, there's a link on our website um, or in our e-blast that you can um, go online, fill out the form. And each Wednesday we send an e-blast out. We post it to our Facebook page. Um, there should be a link on our website. Um, as I see people on Facebook and different groups saying, hey, I'm looking for work, who's hiring? I, you know, post that link out there as well. So we're trying to help businesses get employees. I know it's difficult. I um, just left a meeting with a business, a newer business in town this evening, and um, she had two people hired. That should have started this week. One ended up with COVID, so they're out till at least next week. Um, the other one flat out ghosted her. She wow. once. Yeah, so she's frustrated with that. Um, and I'm hearing that from, you know, more and more people that they hire somebody on and then they either don't show up their first day or come for a day or so and find something else and move on. So I know it's a, a reality and something that, you know, the chamber and the Business Recovery Center is really trying to figure out how to get employees to our businesses. Um, but we haven't found the golden ticket for that, but we're still working on it. Well, I heard a few rumblings around the table when you said that too of agreement. So yeah, not the only one that's dealing with that right now. Right. Oh, how's it going? Uh, doing better. Uh, I mean, we in 2020, we were down revenue about 800,000. Uh, just like restaurants, we were closed for about five and a half months out of the year. I've been out 
CPP, we got first and second round. So that really helped. Uh, we're solely profitable this year. Uh, the one thing that COVID did is make us adjust, you know, instead of sitting on our laurels and waiting to see what happened. We came up with a bunch of new revenue streams. We got some rid of, uh, you know, let some employees go that were dead weight <laughs> and did some restructuring, even our membership. And it's starting to, you know, it was shown fruitful this year. And uh, so even though we're still down about revenue wise, about 15, 18%, uh, well, that's part of it. We're, we're, mm -hmm. we're making money. Right. So we're more efficient. So in the long run, it'll turn out really good for us. Kurt, last but not least. Uh, same on the labor front, uh, really hard to find unskilled labor, skilled labor. Um, supply chain is um, really bad, and I don't see an end in sight for that. Uh, ingredients, flavors, things that we rely heavy from offshore, you either can't get a container under it. If you can, it's three to four times the rate that it was back in 19 before this whole mess started. So um, yeah, we're not alone. The entire food uh, chain right now is at risk. Um, you know, I, they're, they're, some economists in our sector are saying we will, for the first time since the Great Recession, People will feel scared that they don't have enough food. Wow. And it could be that bad. And I agree with it. Um, customers that we do bases for, we're constantly having to shift schedules because they can't get packaging or something, you know, on their end. So the whole food chain is, is really messed up. Um, we gotta get we gotta get more truck drivers. Um, you know, this is not new. We knew this was going to be a problem for years as the baby boomers retired. And mm -hmm. So we are lobbying on the federal level to try and get the CDL dropped to 18. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that'd be great. Because right now, if, if you want to go into the, if you have a CDL, mm -hmm. you can easily walk on for 80 to 100,000 a sure. year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all the national carriers have huge benefits. Tell me what teenager yeah. at 18 has a crack at that too. kind of right? revenue. Yeah. yeah. Um, how, how is, or I, I listened to a podcast one time all about the trucking and they were coming from a different state and what they were lobbying for and that across the nation, their state did, uh, did it a little differently but to get the licensing for the CDL. Mm -hmm. I don't know how Oregon is, maybe you know that. It required the DMV and all these extra tests or some states had a third party when you right. go over there and you can, so it wasn't, you weren't relying on the state because that was this whole holdup way. Like you couldn't get people, you could go through all the training, but you couldn't get tested. Right. You know how Oregon is? Yeah, they do uh, like ITTR, they, they're a testing. They're an actual testing. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, and and Oregon, I think I think we're going to get a lot of traction. Our, uh, our delegates seem to be very interested in this as an mm -hmm. opportunity to add to career technical education in high school, um, help prepare these people to, to go out and, and make a very good living. And that's something so, that should help our partisan support. Too. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we tried to run this uh, back in 2010. Hmm. Uh, that's when we really started seeing the waves of the baby boomers retiring, mm -hmm. wanted to get in front of it, and it was killed. No, Nobody even because we weren't feeling any pain yet right right now we can all feel the pain right? now we've got a mess and people are like well i guess if they can go to the military and drive their big trucks why can't they learn to drive a semi down the highway seems so, like a reasonable question right <laughs> is there still an issue with the um, unloading of the containers so they're they're ports no that that was so mis uh messaged it's not the ports, it's the freight to get the containers off of the port. We don't have enough trucks and drivers to keep things fluid. And you know, before they started showing 60 container ships at Long Beach, we always had 20 or 30. So it was like for us in the industry, it's like, this is not new news. What we do have, though, is we have a very big imbalance of containers globally. Um, 
a lot of the steamship lines had to pick and choose what areas of the world they were going to, you know, call on. Well, they were profit taking, so doing the, the lanes that they make the best money on. So, the example, we have uh, peaches in Greece that we have been trying to move for six months. We cannot get a container ship yeah. to pick up our containers. So we'll end up trucking those some other place in Europe, um, paying customs every time we go sure. through yeah. countries. Um, Why not just do it in Georgia? They don't do processed peach in Georgia. No, it looks good, but yeah. <laughs> right. there's a reason we buy all of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That I just I'd love to buy everything from the US, you just can't. So, so, but we're as a company doing very well. Uh, we've, we've managed to try and stay ahead of things. We've innovated. Um, we have some new products that we brought on a few years ago that are stepping up and doing well. So, and the least amount of time I can spend there, the better. So, <laughs> it's all about automation. Yep. Skiing and Hawaii. <laughs> yep. Well, I'm supposed to be retired. How are you? I, I named my replacement in 16. So oh. <laughs> I'm supposed to just be an owner, but and how's that going? Not, not well. You know, it, it's going good. I don't do as much with my business as I do. I lobby in Oregon, Washington, Idaho for the food industry. Oh, okay. I didn't know and you know, that's a volunteer gig, right? Yeah. But I like it. Cool. Because yeah. you can see how you can make a difference, right? Instead of complaining about freight, we're trying to do something about it. I want right. The labor thing, I'm sure I'll be complaining 20 years from now because as well we have a generation that probably just do. doesn't really care. No, I mean, <laughs> you got you got to figure that it's going to push automation. Oh, absolutely. I mean, everything from the ports to the Tesla trucks that are self-driving. Yep. You know. Yeah. And then there's going to be fewer jobs. Yeah. At some point. And did you see that Tesla truck that they did last week? Mm -hmm. I think it went from Arizona to somewhere in Texas all by itself. Really? Yep. Not a problem. One made it on time. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. Well, this is only going to push it forward. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You saw really Kelly O'Neill's kid, but you guys are never going to have that. Right. You're not going to need it. Yeah. I'm scared about my oldest getting a driver's license, so maybe they can hurry up and get that <laughs> yeah. car right? Like, Three hundred dollars. Three hundred. Yeah, well, right. an extra three hundred dollars that people could still get if they worked under. They could still work as long as they worked under what their benefit was. They could get up to three hundred dollars. That ended December thirty first. So I'm hoping that will help push some more people. It's starting to dry up for them sooner. Yeah, was that like three hundred a week? A week, yeah. Yeah. They could work yeah. up to their benefit amount. If they stay just under, they could get all that plus the three hundred dollars a week. Wow! So yeah, for nineteen year old. Like, so they're working part time. And plus the regular really unemployment. So that's all done yeah. now. So hopefully, yeah, yeah. I noticed about a month and a half after the the big subsidies ended in September that we started getting that potential. Really money. interesting. Well, the money was running. Out. Yeah, Free well, money was well, and everything's out. more expensive. So yeah. you know, sooner or later, they got to pay rent again, and they got well, to start two people working just to yeah. cover the bills. Yeah, I mean, especially you know, they're saying February heating your home's going to mm -hmm. almost double. So yeah. especially back east yeah. where they use oil. So oh, yeah, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Right, well, thank you everybody for the for the comments. It's, I, I always love listening to this section of the meeting because uh, you know to hear what's actually going on on the ground out there with you guys is really helpful for me. So thank you. So uh, let's move on to the uh, the updates from the economic yeah. development office. Let's. Uh, okay, Greg, can you? Is that one? Okay, can you load it from there? Yeah, it's loaded. Okay. I All will. right. This this. Is too long, but I always uh, like giving you guys an idea of what's going on out there in town. So, um, yeah. so we did that already. Uh, and so, yeah, here's the up next. So, first of all, Clackamas County Sandy Clinic, that's what you see over there next to the PD. Um, that's where it was about a week ago. Um, just to give you an idea, what uh, if you don't know what this clinic is for, is uh, basic. 
uh, behavior, health, dental, and primary care medical services for people who are on um, assistance, uh, typically like section eight and stuff like that. Um, um, they uh, actually did demo the entire the entirety of the building is there before. And this is, so this is an entirely new structure. Um, they're also going to end up correcting a lot. There's a lot of um, pedestrian right of way issues on the west side of the building around there. All of the, that's going to be corrected. Um, so we're looking at uh, that is going to be finished up. At least what they tell us right now is it's going to finish up by October 22, unless they run into labor trouble, which seems like a fair possibility. Uh, next. Uh, then Next Adventure, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what you're going to see over there over the coming year. This is how Next Adventure is currently set up. So this is their, uh, you know, the, the, the existing old building um, that's going to be demolished with the deck on it and everything and the new building they built behind. Um, they're going to, uh, not only are they demoing that building uh, and rebuilding it, but they're reconfiguring the parking lot and everything. So then it will look like this when it's done. So have they built the new building yet? No, no. no. Well, the, there's, okay. So there's a building behind the old ski shop there. Uh -huh. that, that was built a couple of years ago. That's re relatively new. Okay. Uh, but this is going to be built this summer. It's the front piece of it. The, front, yeah, the, original, the, front piece of it. the original, original building. Yeah. Yeah. It's taking it so now, yeah, you can see they'll have a, a porch out here that'll connect right to the uh, pedestrian right away. And then the door, they're bringing everything out front so they gain so much more space that I think they're getting like double the space mm. they have right now. Next Adventures. Um, next they're like, I'm, yeah, next to the food cart. It's oh, you're not familiar with them? They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're like, like uh, really camping. They're like a, a working class RE. Yeah, the they have uh, they have the same sort of product set up, but they also have like new stuff. Like mid price. Yeah, mid price. We take yeah. our yeah. stuff the kids yeah. grow out of, and they give us yeah. seventy five bucks of credit, you yeah. know, and we use it to buy new used stuff too. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's really good because when you have kids that grow, <laughs> yeah, you only use it for one season. And I, I'm just so I'm so happy that Next Adventure decided to build their second or their third store out here in Sandy. There mm -hmm. are other two stores in Florida. Uh, one of them's on Grand, and I don't know where it is, but um, um, they've been in Portland actually for a long time, and they've um, um, I've got a couple of friends who've been shopping there for years and years and years, and they're, they're just they're great business. Guys. Yeah, well, and way back, I mean, when I was in early high school, student, there was a couple of you know good size ski shops out here. Yeah, yeah, no, there's always been the big three, right? Well, yeah, this that's... this is a good replacement for the one that's uh, shut down. I mean, they they, they really do fit the. The model and they really do fit sandy in that um there's so much outdoor um recreation around here we really needed kind of a place like this um that wasn't just focused on uh winter sports it's right like and it's a year around yeah well there deacon brian were just in whippersnappers yesterday oh really, really? yeah because they were looking at oh that's right because they're looking at maidens one of his empty spots they're looking at the bus and virtual as a temporary spot to to be open while this is all going on because they can't be open while this is going on so they're looking for a temporary six to 12 month location yeah i, act, I actually put so, it in touch with and you. i know from ski pools so oh yeah that's right that. you probably yeah, know. they're good guys yeah no uh, I've, I've only met deke i haven't met the other one but deke seems, deke seems like a really nice guy um but anyway yeah that was the other point i was going to bring up is in order to do this i mean they're going to completely demo the building so they're going to have to move everything to a different location they were looking for uh at least four thousand square feet of space somewhere and initially told them well good luck uh, there's not we don't have that much stuff like that here in sandy at all um i ordered them over to the boot cat space because um the, the ladies from the room came to release um and um the uh, building owner just wasn't interested in a short-term lease so um and then kelly happened to remind me well, what about bunsen burner i thought about it for a second i was like oh my god that's perfect concrete floors roll up doors high ceilings that's mm -hmm. what they need so um, hopefully that'll work out. They'll be there temporarily for I think it'll be about nine months, and then they'll move in. Mm -hmm. so. um, then the Smith Building. Oh man! Um, so um, I think I mentioned to you guys last time that the Smith Building um, was purchased recently. Mm -hmm. Which building is it? That's the one. Um, the that's, Studebaker Baker Building. Yeah, the Studebaker Baker. Oh, okay. Building. The blue one on the yeah, corner. Yeah, it's been, it's been it was disintegrating in the rain for the last mm -hmm. 15, 20 years. Um, Somebody bought it finally, and not only somebody, um, the gentleman that ended up buying it, and, and I've talked to him, he wouldn't be upset if I shared this information. He is one of the co owners of Wayfinder Beer, and he would like, he's got a couple of different ideas about what he'd like to do with this building. He, uh, 
And by the way, he kind of fancies himself a, a, a small time developer, is what he calls himself. He has a number of projects like this that are, uh, that are going on. And uh, he says, I just love buying old buildings and fixing them up because they don't make them like they used to, which mm -hmm. is a lot of truth to that. He's got two concepts for this building. Um, this is his backup concept. He's talking about a small natural food grocery store. It would take up the entire building, um, and then he would turn the back lot back into what it used to be, which was a parking lot. Um, this one um, is his backup because, as I mentioned before, he's um, a co-owner of Wayfinder Beer. So option number two is a wife, uh, Wayfinder Beer tapper, and that's the yellow section there. Um, and then with two separate retail uh, rental spaces, that's the orange, orange section in the front. Uh, for lease, and then the blue are uh, shared restrooms and uh, shared space between all three suites. I think that this is the route that he wants to go. He would um, he would build a very nice patio on the back end of the building, and then the rest would be green space. Um, so it'd be outdoor um, dining and drinking areas, um, no parking. Um, and I uh, so we talked quite extensively about this when he was uh, uh, telling us the uh, idea for this, and he said, well. First of all, most of my customers are going to be coming there, you know, four o'clock and later. Um, so there's the parking of the public parking lot across the street um, that can be used that isn't really that full after, you know, AC goes home and a lot of the other uh, daytime businesses go home over there. Um, but honestly, he's, he's strangely, he's not afraid of the, of the the lack of parking at all. He says, yeah, I'll figure it out. Okay. Like, okay. Well, I mean, He's from Portland. Yeah, well, he's from Portland too. Yeah. So I think initially people will be a little upset about that. But I think over the course of time, I'd be curious to see how right he is about that. Maybe everybody else skateboards. So. Yeah. How many square feet is old building? 10,000. So it's, yeah, it's, it looks a lot bigger than it actually is. In the work he's done so far, he put a new roof on it? Yeah. So, so far he has, uh, to, to show us how serious he is about this, he's, uh, he ripped the old roof off it, put a new roof on it so it doesn't get any worse um, with the, because uh, there's some some leaking on the inside of the building and there has been for a long time. Uh, but he spent a fair amount of money on that and um, he, he just, he let us know after he's done. Yeah, I'm serious. So um, we're looking at, I don't know how quickly this is going to go. Um, this may take a couple of building seasons to get through because there's a lot of work to be done over there. But we just couldn't be more delighted that this building is actually going to turn into some right that will generate some economic activity. Yeah. And I mean, the tap room, yeah, that's a great place to have. Well, that area needs beautified. Yeah. Bill, Bill might not like it. But. Well, Bill, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Bill. <laughs> um, but anyhow, no, I'm just, I'm so looking forward to seeing this building get fixed up because it is a cool building, you know, and it's something that we get asked about a lot at mm -hmm. City Hall is, you know, how come the city doesn't do anything? We don't know, but um, I'm just really excited about the fact that, that there's some, some movement here. And the more things like this that occur in the downtown core area, the more people it will draw. Yeah. Like downtown Bend. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're going to find something, you just park and yeah. wherever and walk it. Well, and um, I, I also love when you take a property that's not, has no usage at all right now and turn it into something useful, like we did with Dutch Bros. I mean, that was perfect. Mm -hmm. It's an old brownfield site that literally couldn't have been anything else. And uh, I know Dutch Bros have been poking around here for a long time, but they saw. The possibilities there, and by the way, and they were fantastic to work with too. The company that they had built that place out in Dutch Bros, and so both mm -hmm. great companies. Um, but it's just so neat from an from an economic development perspective to see something that generated zero dollars turn into something that changed the right in our downtown. And it looks, I mean, they did, and that's the coolest stuff. So anyway, enough about that. Um, I think that's it. Is there anything else? Oh, here's the view of what it's going to look like if he goes with the tap room. Um, he was kind enough to forward this along. So these are obviously the two suites, and then the tap room would be over here. Um, and I'm I'm trying to encourage him to offer food over there too. I think he's on board with that idea. It will cost him a little bit more to put in a kitchen in there, but I think he'll ultimately do it. What's, we'll what's his What's time frame that he thinks? You know, I don't. He's he would like to get going over there. I. If he could get it done this year, I think he would be happy. I don't know if that's going to happen. It might take two construction seasons for him to finish it up and get it done. But he he would like to get it done by the end of 2022. 
is, is the gateway part of that building or is it a separate no, building? That's a separate building. There so there's two, yeah, there's two buildings there. there. There's the Smith building, which is this building, and the Junker building, which has the uh, bike bar and the and the I never knew where one ended and the other began. So <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a little tiny gap between them, from what I understand. So okay. is that it? Oh no, and then there's just some some additional notes. Um, the covered structure over at no place is finished. Um, and that project went really well. There weren't any cost overruns on it or anything, and it looks fantastic. The next time you would walk by over there, they've still got the construction fence up yet because it's going to actually put a new fence up around the back. Um, and they don't want to leave it open right now because they're afraid that they're going to get all those people back there and they probably would. Um, but that'll be taken care of in the next week or two. Um, but uh, that one was built by. Nielsen Construction of Fairview. They were the same company that did the one over at San Landia. Um, and yeah, went great. Um, I finally got some movement on the covered structure for Colgate. Um, it, it, it's taken us a long time because um, uh, Mr. Lasowski had some specific um, uh, elements to that structure that he wanted to see. Um, and I didn't know if we were going to be able to get those done or not. Um, we are now working with um, Keystone Architecture. Um, Blaine Scalini is an architect who's worked with on a couple of different projects uh, with the city. And uh, Blaine has assured me that he he's <laughs> the one um, design element that he really wanted to, that Ron wanted to see over there was an opaque roof. And I, I didn't have, I don't have any experience with that sort of thing. So I don't know what to do. Blaine says, no problem. I know exactly what to do. I've built a lot of structures with this type of requirement. So um, he has assured me that he's going to get something done over there. And I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about that. Um, just a minor note, of, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, if you've been over by the library lately, but the planners over there, those two round planners that they have out front are starting to fall apart. Uh, so I'm, ha uh, I'm having a local contractor come over there and at least fix them, uh, the tops of them so the bricks aren't hanging off anymore. Um, if that works, uh, we'll do that to both of them then, and we might do a complete uh, overhaul of them uh, this summer and paint them and fix them properly. Um, two companies, well, one company's uh, moved and one company's added to Sandy Domino's is moving into the uh, space where the cigar shop used to be before they're, where they are now. Um, that, that space has been empty for a while, and um, they've, they've been working on that. But honestly, I don't know what's taking so long. Right now. Like dominoes. Yeah. 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 Um, and then in the suite right next to them, and I don't know, you guys, many of you guys may not even know there was a suite there, but um, what, Greg, what did that used to be? Didn't that used to be a meat market a long time ago where Mary Forrest was now? There was a meat market. There. Yeah. And, and then it was yeah. a. There was a vacuum cleaner pizza. shop or something like that. Yeah, the vacuum used to be where the cigar shop was, I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah. That could be yeah. somewhere. And then O'Reilly's used to be the blockbuster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, most recently, it was a knitting shop that was back there. Most people right. didn't see it because it's a really oddly shaped um, suite. Um, Mary Forrest, uh, farmer's insurance agent uh, that's in uh, the Wintermere building, moved over there and started her own agency. And uh, revamp that whole thing was very nice. So she's having her ribbon cutting them off. Anybody stop on? Three thirty. There you go. Thank you, Amber. <laughs> Open house three to five. Ribbon cutting at three thirty. Rain or shine, or yeah. snow. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, the store, the, the the complex that's going up over next to Tractor Supply is the Sandy Ball Storage Unit Complex. Mr. Benson sold the property and the plans uh, for his storage unit complex over there to another uh, investor. Oh, so he's not doing it. No, he's not doing it. Um, and <laughs> yeah, uh, right now. <laughs> I, I honestly have never met that, um, that firm. I, it just started, the construction just started. So, um, but that's what it's going to be, storage unit complex. Have you heard anything from Bob on when he's going to start the food carts? No, I have not. Uh, he, I, I know he's been on last week, but he's back. Yeah. No, I uh, I talked to him a little bit um, uh, before he left, and um, he's got <laughs> he's got a lot of balls in the air right now. He bought the VFW building too, um, and so he wants to convert that into. He's not really sure what yet, and he has some other designs on some other properties in town. If we can convince the people to sell, but we'll see how that goes. They talked um, over by you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the plan. Um, uh, Todd Hoffman bought the yeah, properties over there. He's uh, going to do another food truck pop, which would be great. Uh, but no, I haven't, I haven't talked to him about food trucks. So. Um, I do know. <laughs> because I'm sure, yeah, I know. You would like to know very much what's going on with that. Um, 
I think that's pretty much it for what's going on. I just right got there. a question. I don't know if you guys can answer it. Is there anything in the works to help uh, with the increased homeless that we're getting? I, what I do know is that there's a task force that has been formed um, in uh, Rich and uh, Lori, which are great counselors with their backgrounds to be part of that. And so we've had some conversations. We had a workshop. Uh, was it, hang on a second. Was it a workshop or was it an executive session? <laughs> talk about one I can't talk about yet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't, I was mad at something. Um, but um, I think it was a workshop. Um, and, and just some uh, uh, about some of the policies and things that are coming down from the, the six uh, the circuit court here. Right. Is it the sixth circuit? The six, yeah, six, yeah. Uh, circuit. Six circuits. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, the new rule changes in Oregon that are coming down as a, the first of the month here and, and what cities can and can't do and those type of things. If you've been following, Salem and, and what's going on there. Um, not just in Salem, but in the ninth or it's the ninth circuit court of the state. The ninth ninth circuit circuit court. Court. Yeah. The, the Boise decision. Um and then the Gans Pass decision and those type of things. And I don't know if Jordan is still Jordan I saw him on there, but I know he, he has young kids and family who may have stepped away. Uh, can I ask if he wants to yeah. Well, yeah, let's see if he wants to pop in here. Hey, Jordan, we unmuted you if you uh, have anything to add to that. If you don't, we understand. I messaged him and he just said that he was muting to me. So. Oh, okay. Never okay. mind, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious because it feels like more and more we're seeing more. Yeah. And yeah. it'd be a shame to so, let it get well, away. And they're getting a little more brazen. We had someone yeah. that jumped the fence over the pool, broke into the outdoor. Uh, changing rooms and defecated over in the uh, sealed toilets and made a big old mess and broke the door oh, going back wow. there. We got them on camera. They caught them. Um, thankfully, they were in Clackamas County because they prosecuted. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's it, it's a tough situation. I'd say 80% of them are mental illness mm -hmm. and drugs. And, you know, it, it's so hard to help them. Yeah, I mean, they got hit bottom and then went out. But until then, they're just going to, you know, you're enabling any almost anything that you do. Yeah. I know, I just know that that's coming down the new rules. So, the things that we have to change because of those rules, we as a city don't get to do decide what, on a lot of those things. Do you know things. what those rules will be? Um, I'm not the expert in it. So, I'd have to uh, refer back to uh, Jim. You know, like um, uh, Rich, you know, is a police officer, so he knows them very well. Uh, but uh, some of those are, you know, allowing, you have to allow people to have a place to sleep. Um, at some point, you have to allow them to have a place to keep their stuff um, on public property or somewhere. So if they need to go to do something. Um, even, if even if it's like downtown, like in Portland or there. But in but on private property, it doesn't take your private property. No, I don't believe it's private property. Like I said, I'm not an expert in those rules, right. so I don't want to misspeak on any of those things. But I don't believe it's private property; it's public property. Yeah. But public yeah. property also is right away things like this, and you got ODOT right away. We've got yes. So how does that how does that work with these new rules? They're all trying to figure it out um, in that process. Um, not just us, but other cities too. Um, we're not Portland. We don't want to be Portland, and how do we keep? But with the rules changing, it's very hard when you're in a different, you know, same rules affect other parts of the state. So, anyways, trying to trying to navigate that is what I'm getting at. Is the city has already engaged to try to get ahead of that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, is we're a small town, um, and we don't have the resources that I kind of like say. I'm not saying anyone's doing it right. Mm -hmm. A town like Gresham might have like 100 plus thousand people to put more resources to something than a town of. Yeah, they got probably 100 times the problem too. I, I, I know that the, with the, the, the legislation, whatever, you could, you could um, uh, designate an area in town to do things to where if you have a place to go 
put them like, you, 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 you people, you, you put them there. Um, and there's some community that we put rivers in that. It, you can see a lot of problems in that too, you know, uh, and why from a health standpoint and those type of things, you know, you wouldn't want to do, or why it's been uh, advocated not to do that. Um, right. So there's that not snowballs. There's not really any right. It's just if you don't have those places, you can't move them on. You can't in some of those types of things between certain hours, you know. Um, but the um, problem you pander to them, they this is weird. They all have cell phones. Yeah. I don't know where they're getting the cell phones. You okay. pander to them, and then every, all of a sudden now you're a draw. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I think when we're talking economic planning, that has vastly become a very important topic when you're trying to grow the city in the right way and help businesses out and you know, yeah. residents. And... Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, it's just, it's hard to go down a path and then they change the rules. Yeah. I know on council in the last, I don't know, five, six years, if this particular stuff has changed three or four times on this, where we've had to rewrite code because we were not in compliance with the Ninth Circuit Court in the mm -hmm. state of Oregon. So you're, you're mandated to, you can't not do this. Um, How about you make the location part of the police station parking lot so that they're pretty uncomfortable staying there and they tend to move on? <laughs> well, the other thing is, as it was brought up, you know, not, not all these people want to be in a group. And so to get them there, because they're moving out of maybe Portland because of issues that they arise where they didn't feel safe there. So they're going out to smaller communities or whatever, because they don't want to be amongst a bigger group because they have been harassed or, or threatened. Or I don't know all the details. I'm just hearing from other people on that. That's not my background, but just kind of regurgitating some of the stuff that has been brought up. We're not the only community. I know you guys all know that. Um, it just it's, it, it sucks in the fact that we can't go down a path and then no we can't do that either. They keep moving the goalposts. You know, and, um, so anyway, but okay. I think we are. I think we're doing things a lot better in other communities, um, and that's not hard to do, I guess. <laughs> well, you look west to us, but I know. Not just politics play into it, but the courts. And... So sorry, I don't have a better answer for you. Well, the answer is yeah, we're we're the council is definitely discussing this. This has been on and on the agenda in one form or another for a while. Um, so um, yeah, they are addressing it. It's a difficult problem to solve. And they do have a a, a, a subcommittee with yeah, yeah. Lori and Rich and Jordan and. A few other people there to, and they brought in people uh, from outside to talk about what work well in their areas and ideas because you kind of have to do those things because you're kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. You have to do something. Like, you have to. You're mandated to do something. It's not something. Not a choice. It's, it's a, I think you only get better with from the state level. You know where they have some help with you know mental well-being and so forth and drug addiction and, and but you know you turn around and hey card drugs legal wait until it hits the middle school because I guarantee you these dealers are going to give it out free to Ed. you know they only get your hand slapped because yeah. they want new customers and what was it by December over a hundred thousand uh, people died from well, not necessarily drug overdose, fentanyl. Mm -hmm. More people died from fentanyl overdoses last year than died of COVID. Yep. Wow. And it's and, and, then, and, and we it talked made, about that though. And then and then made double next year because there is so much fentanyl across the border. They could kill every single man, woman, and child in this well, country. A lot of places are decriminalizing it, so mm -hmm. they won't prosecute it. Yeah. So there's no deterrent. Well, anything that you can pass on would be great. Yeah. You know, um, or even if you know, I assume it has to do with the Eighth Amendment uh, rights for homeless. Yeah, and I know that some new things came in place. So, like I said, I'm not the expert in that, um, but um, 
by the next meeting, I'm sure we'll have some more information on it because we we're supposed to get another report back from this. Yeah. Okay. What we're doing. All right. All right. So, um, you want to just dive into the RFP real quick? Sure. Let's uh, go to the RFP. And um... so, um, the RFP that is before you, and I think I sent an electronic copy out to everybody. So, um, you guys uh, that are participating virtually should have one too in your inbox if you haven't seen it yet. Um, this is. You want to hold up? I'm sorry. Do you want to hold up? No. no, no it's, well, I don't have. That's the last slide. Well, I, I have it in my email. You sent it to me. I think they have it on paper and they have yeah, it on paper. Yeah. 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 So um, I first of all, I apologize for not getting this to you sooner. I it was my intention to get this to you last week, and uh, with um, everything that I've had on my plate recently, um, things kind of snowballed on me. So, um, in the future, you will get this information much more quickly. Yeah, it'd be a little more time to digest. Yeah, right? exactly. So. Uh, <laughs> That being said, um, I I don't know you know how much of this we'll really get into tonight. Um, I just wanted you to have a copy of this. Is essentially what we're going to put out there. I think for this report, um, although that's not going to happen, I'm going to still refine it. And I need to add some legal boilerplate to the end of it. So this will probably go out in a couple of weeks. So you do have some time if you'd like to go out and, and, and take a look through it and everything. I would encourage you to do that. Um, just so you get a, a basic idea of, of the kind of report that we're looking for and pay particular attention to the scope of work um, because there's a lot in this actually. Um, the budget that we have for this, and thank you again to council for providing me with some funding for this, uh, is, is more than adequate. We will be able to get a really good, for the amount of money that we have set aside for this, uh, it's not to exceed $55,000. That is more than enough to do a very good economic development strategic plan. So I'm very excited about that. Um, when we put this out, um, because it's more than $50,000, I'm going to have to put it out uh, as a public document. So um, any firm that does this kind of work um, can submit something to us uh, for this. I am going to reach out to two firms specifically um, to get responses for this. Both have indicated that they will provide us responses. One of those firms is Eco Northwest. Eco Northwest is a company we've worked with a lot, and I talked a little bit about them last night. They are currently doing an economic opportunity analysis for us, which is a, um, a, a different, it, it's a similar but different report um, to this. It focuses a lot more on the availability of land, both commercially, you know, like commercial land, light industrial land, heavy industrial land, residential, what we need, what we actually have. Um, that report's going to be really important because I think one of the reasons that we don't have um, more industrial, you know, particularly light industrial type businesses out here is we just, we don't have a lot of available industrial land. Mm -hmm. And the lots that we do have are very small. That was done by design uh, back in the day by Dr. Uh, you know, that was really pushed by Dr. Lazenby when he was city manager. And I understand the logic behind that. We, we were really thinking at the time, uh, small manufacturers, really small manufacturers, maybe even like 3D printing, getting into stuff like that, doesn't take a lot of space. They're looking for um, smaller lots to their cost. Them. What I've learned um, in, in the last 10 years of being in economic development is that's not entirely true. They are not, they're, they're not all out looking for 100 acre lots, but five to 10 is really the sweet spot. And we don't really have enough of that around. Um, although, you know, because most of our available um, land to develop is a kind of in Skipper Lundin, and that's always kind of been a question mark because we just don't know how that's going to end up developing out. Um, so the EOA is going to be really important for them to do. Um, Eco Northwest has done a number of reports for us over the years, and they've always provided a pretty good product. Um, the other company I'm going to reach out to, obviously, is Community Attributes, the, the gentleman that presented to us the other night, and I've been in touch with them. And uh, they are, um, they're ready to go with this too. They are very confident in their abilities as I'm sure came across in the presentation. Uh, but they would basically very much like to do uh, this report out. So, so we're gonna get a minimum of two responses. We may get four. Um, what I wanted to really kind of uh, just impress upon you guys tonight is the next question is, okay, well, what do we have to do with all this? The Economic Development Advisory Board is going to be the primary um, stakeholders group 
for, for this. There's going to be several stakeholders groups, and we'll work with the contractor that we end up hiring to determine who those are. But there are different groups around town that uh, somebody doing a report like this wants um, their perspective from. We're going to be, the, because we kind of represent business and we have the chamber with us, as well as some key um, city staffers, um, they're really, really interested in what, um, what we have to say. They are going to want to talk to this board um, a number of times over the course of uh, the development of this report. I think we'll be able to work it out so that um, if they need to talk to us, I'll have enough advance notice that I'll be able to incorporate that into our existing meetings. So I would say maybe not the next meeting, but the two meetings after that, we'll probably, uh, we not probably, we'll almost definitely have the contractor that's doing that report in here to talk to us about our opinions about things, about their process, where they're going. They're gonna want a lot of input from us uh, from Jeremy and I, Jordan, just and uh, Stan from the business or from the city perspective, but also from you guys from a business perspective, because you're really representing the same uh, business community here, and and definitely from Chris as well. Um, so um, that part of it, um, I think, will work fairly seamlessly. Um, they're also going to want to have they're going to want two main stakeholders groups, us, and then they're going to want a stakeholders group of key city people. So that'll probably be Kelly whoever the new public works director is, myself and Jake. And we will probably end up meeting with them between three and six times over the course of this too, just, you know, for progress reports. And, um, so we can show them where certain pieces of data are. Um, the other function that this board um, will serve for this is, uh, uh, we would like this board to be the one that reviews the responses to the RFP. So um, I'm not quite sure what that's going to look like yet. Um, that might, that that might take a long, you know, if, if we were lucky enough to get it for the next meeting, that could end up being a two hour meeting if we if we prepare it correctly. I don't well, I'll have to talk to the chair about that. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out when it comes. Yeah, we'll to, figure it out. We'll make sure this stuff gets out to people prior. Oh to yeah. <laughs> You're gonna get so when we do that review, I'm I'm anticipating we'll probably have we'll probably have two responses. It'll be the two that I reached out to. I, I'd be surprised if they got a, eh, a third. I'd say maybe a 25% chance they get a third response. Um, but they're, you know, they'll, 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 it'll take some time to go through. So you guys are going to have to get this at least a week, maybe two weeks before the end of talking about it. Um, it'll, it'll take some days. But that's, the, that's really the most important function, I think, of this advisory board is when it comes to this report is to look at the RFPs and to make the determination which contract we're going to um, yeah, um, Can you um, quickly highlight the difference between this economic development plan yep. here and the EOA? And the EOA, what the EOA stands for, I'll let you describe the abbreviation because I forget economic. I forget economic it. opportunities analysis. Which is requ required in the in the comp plan. In the comprehensive plan, in the comp plan that the city is doing mm -hmm. um, and how they tie. And then what we'll be doing also with the market analysis, yes. which is different. Yes. Which I know Hans, you use the market analysis when mm -hmm. uh, going to the bank to get money mm -hmm. and how that ties in. Because I think there's a lot of confusion. Yeah. And you know, it took me a while just to go, what's the, between the EOA and this? What's the difference? I knew what the market analysis was and how it differs, but. Mm -hmm. Unless you describe it, it can be uh, yeah. Sure. So if you can do it real quickly, like mm -hmm. differences there. If so, any questions. so let's start with the retail market survey. The retail market survey. Well, no, we'll, we'll leave that one here. Um, an economic opportunity, economic opportunities analysis looks primarily at the land. Again, it's a land inventory. How much commercial land do we have that's developed? How much commercial land do we have that's undeveloped? How much industrial land do we have in both of those points? Both light and heavy. How much residential? And, and they look at residential too, single family, multifamily, all of that stuff. And then it looks, uh, and then it projects that into the future as to, well, if you have this much now and there's this much demand in 2020 or in 2030, you're going to need this. If you want to develop a different, like an industrial sector, like, hey, we want to have more light industrial businesses. Here. You have to factor that in the equation, you're going to need even more. So basically, an EOA, that's its primary function is to look at land versus population and growth and project into the future what our needs are going to be so we can do some long term planning and make sure we have enough 
five to 10 acre lots to put our light industrial businesses that come to us on, um, in a nutshell. And economic development strategic plan is far more comprehensive than that. What, it, what they will do, and again, read through the scope of work in this, this will explain exactly what, what this report does. Um, they start by taking, they're looking at demographic data, uh, just data sets, mostly census stuff, but um, they, all, they could look at consumer spending data, they could look at um, a, a number of different types of things. It's mostly demographic, but population, labor, all of that stuff. Um, they then, so, so to give us a baseline of where we are, um, they then look at, um, th th then they'll have, so we develop stakeholders groups, they come out and do they meet with stakeholders groups and sit down with them and say, what's, what's your vision for the, for the city? What, where do you want to see the city go? And they get opinions from different groups, like maybe the school, uh, the school district that would have one stakeholders group, business owners would be another one, um, just regular citizens would be another one. And then the, in tandem with that, they'll do um, uh, basically like open houses for citizens, the same sort of thing. Where do you want to see the city going? Uh, how do you want to see the city develop? What kind of businesses do you want to live and work here? You know, those kinds of questions. And they put all of that together into, and, and, and then um, and then in talking to us, like with the city, um, you know, one of the things that we'd like to see the most is more living wage jobs. We really like to see people living and working both. It's, it's great for the environment. It's it it, uh, it 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 would be good for the growth of the city. We want people to develop a base. Um, then they take all of this stuff together. They figure out what it is. They, you know, they, they consolidate into which directions do we want to go? Like for Sandy, I, I anticipate that when they're all is said and done, we'll talk, there, there will be some desire to see some more light industrial here in Sandy. That's my guess. I could be wrong. But um, the question that we put before them then is, okay, we want to develop the sector of our economy, um, but we, don't, we have this barrier. We don't have anywhere to put these businesses. How do we get around them? They look at, at, at all of the, the, you know, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats in the city. And point by point, they'll come up with a different, they'll come up with a series of strategies. So for light industrial, we want more light industrial businesses. And then they will give us an exact strategy how to accomplish that. Um, you know, whether that's changes to the code or whether that's maybe the city needs to develop, you know, in looking at other cities, how they dealt with it, maybe the city needs to uh, create a, um, a development agency and start buying derelict properties and flipping them. Um, but they'll, they'll come up with a point by point strategy for how the city moves forward for a period of time. Uh, Jeremy and I were talking about this. Some cities do five year plans, some cities do 10 year plans, some do 15 year plans. Um, city of Astoria just recently did one. They were, Astoria already knows what they are. They've been the same thing for the last hundred years. So they really wanted to look at it in the short term. They had some specific problems that they wanted to deal with, but they're not making any real major changes to their economy. Um, McMinnville, on the other hand, did a 15 year plan. Um, longer term plans like that generally tend to be a good idea if you're a larger city and you have a lot of resources so you can have a lot of time and energy to devote to these. Um, to incremental change over a long period. Jeremy and I kind of brainstormed about it and came up with, you know, ten, we're probably right in the middle. And the reason that we thought that for a 10 year plan, the reason we thought that is in 10 years, a lot of the problems that we're facing now, we're going to have a solution. To. Like, for instance, Skipper 1D, that's, that's the biggest thing in development in Sandy that's going to happen for a long time. We haven't had a lot of available land to do of any kind. To do anything with, and all of a sudden you have this large pile of land here that's going to get developed one way or another. Right? Um, that's going to be ten years from now. That'll be developed, and we'll be on to something else. Um, but if we look at it, you know, from too short of a period, I, I don't think we get enough done. I mean, we we are looking for a little bit more comprehensive change. I think. Well, and that's that's the question we wanted to also leave tonight with. You know, having you go and review this and bring back questions and that type of thing or, or the comments and change is what are your thoughts on the five, 10, or 15? I mean, I wasn't going to share what our thoughts were. I wanted to hear what. There you go. You, you gave us yeah, I gave our, our noodling on over the past. Um, and so that is our thoughts. Five years, I think, is too short for a city that 
we can put a plan out there, but we don't move as fast as um, a large city. Right. And that, that same plan may be sitting there with only two items out of 30 that's happened. But you've given it 10 years where you kind of got momentum going, right? Whereas, you know, 50, over 15 years, and maybe 15 years is the right mark, mm -hmm. um, but it, over that time frame, like a 20 year plan or something, would be everything changes so much in our industries. Right. Maybe we 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 don't want to be stuck. Now, does that mean the city could go out and oh, uh, you know, let's go do another one? But we've never done one like yeah, you know, yeah. that's true. So that's why I have so much trouble, right? Yeah, I've never done one of these. I think a ten-year plan, five years too short. Right. Yeah. That goes by so fast. You know. Yeah. Um, I I think fifteen. Um, that's why I've always kind of done, and during that fifteen years. At the, there'll be those junctions, mm -hmm. five years, ten years, where it changes course, yeah. and uh, and the industry, the fitness industry, it's constantly yeah, changing. It really is. So you have to just apply some flexibility, mm -hmm. and just have this carrot at the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like personally, you might say, hey, at some point I want to be a millionaire. Well, five years might be too short. One year way too short. <laughs> Yeah, and they just kind of work backwards. How are you going to get there? And it's one day at a time. That's and similar. during that course, you know, you're all over the place. There might be a straight line, but you're zigzagging. Do and we have change. any ozone in Sandy? Ozone properties, opportunity zone? Uh, no, we don't. Okay. Unfortunately. Well, don't we have other types like the tech opportunity zone? Yeah, that? I mean, well, there's the. Uh, um, Oh God, I, I'm, I'm blanking on the name right now, but it's um, it's that county program. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, so there is this, these two. There are two. Yeah, ozones are distinctly different. Yeah, no, uh, no, I looked into opportunity zones. Um, yeah, because of some of the grants that were offered by the state. You know, okay. The closest opportunity zone to us is in uh, Portland. Okay. Um, okay, I'm thinking of something different then. But... Yeah. It's it's to attract investment to come in in more unlikely areas that are um, economically depressed, yeah. uh, okay. low wages, okay. low yeah. low opportunities. And you get tax breaks. Really well yeah. Well. yeah, and yeah. Yeah, really oh well. yeah, really yeah. Well. they work really well. Really well. Major turnaround. The yeah. investor yeah. potentially, you Brand can out. avoid a sure. capital gains tax um, yeah. from something else you did, you can roll that money into an ozone. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of investors out there looking. Yeah. For zones, but uh, yeah, no, unfortunately, I wish we'd been. Yeah, I think it's done. key to just figure out. I hope I don't know how to address this step, which route to go. Do we want to be industrial, or do we want to go more, know. or do we want to go more professional services? Yeah, obviously, I mean, I'm still looking at you know, medical field, hospital would be nice, lot more lodging. Mm -hmm. I know from the mountain, no one that works on the mountain is going to be able to live on the mountain. So this right. is going to be the hub. For, right. This is going to be the community that supplies the workforce for the everything up the well, hill. When, when the new sewer plant is online, we now have capacity to go after industries we can't go after now, like the food manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, everybody is looking for a good place to build for food manufacturing, especially with all of the unique and specialty things out there. Um, and they're, they're good jobs. Yeah. And that's something so that's that's just that the state economic development agency is pushing too. Food right. Manufacturing is a big one you of know, things. keeping <laughs> keeping in mind that what is what does Sandy Net do to job opportunity or business opportunity? It's huge. <laughs> what does an expanded sewer plant do? Uh, a lot of cities have two main headaches: water in and water out. Government and can't. We've got the water in, government. and we will soon have the water out. Yeah. Government camp was bottlenecks. By the sewer plant. Yeah. When they did the sewer plant, it turned into what it is now. Right. And it could not have happened without the new sewer. Plant. Right. So those are things to me when when the questions asked, do we do light industrial, industrial, light industrial, professional services? Mm -hmm. That's why we're 
having this. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah. what I mean, this is all about. Right? Um, yeah, I have my ideas. Though. I think it might go this way or might go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did because we're, we haven't done the work yet. So we don't know. It could right. turn out that it's just flooded. It's got the land. It's yeah. just this zoning change as time yeah, change. Yeah, and, and that's one. You know, and then in the meantime, it. you know, livability. I mean, people are going to be living here. I mean, the downtown core area, walkable. Mm -hmm. You can just go there. There's a variety of things. I think some yeah. of the new businesses coming in is great for that. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you make that more user friendly? Right. Most people got to drive. Five ten minutes, and you know if you live off two eleven to Barco or anything, yeah. you know, and you're getting up there, it's you're taking your life in your hands. It, you yeah. really are. So yeah. you know, there's that whole thing. How do you get those people in that the whole surrounding area, you know, that are local, you know, to utilize yeah. that, especially if you know businesses are coming in and and there's not going to be any parking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, so yeah, and, and so just the point about this particular report is it's very comprehensive. It's going to look at all of this stuff and all of the planning documents that we've used up to this point to see, well, what if, what if, uh, what, is, what was Sandy saying about this five years ago or 10 years ago? You know, let's look at the Sandy 2040 plan. They're, they're going to incorporate all this. Stuff. This is, that's why I this think I agree more. More of a call on the, the duration. Maybe ten years is too short of a time. Then you can adjust. I mean, fifteen. I mean, in fifteen years, if you look at our growth, I mean, the growth. I mean, you're talking another eight thousand people. We'll sure. we'll be between twenty and thirty thousand people. You know, and it, it may where we've had we're on record growth right now. So, and now the, the whole picture is going to change in so fifteen years. Well, but if you look at that number. And kind of backtrack, it's and you can do these other things. Fine. That's going to yeah. just make it go even further. Yeah. So, and they'll look at you know why Sandy has the growth rates that it's had up until now. What's driving all that growth? There's a number of answers to that. But Sandy is one. So does that will this take into consideration traffic? Yes, it'll, they'll look at and, and the bypass potential. I well, I mean, the, the time horizon for the bypass is probably still like 20 years so or 40 years or 40 or 100. Years. The way that works is you have 20 years of prepping and then 20 years to build. But is that a consideration? If, I mean, if you're yeah, talking about is. downtown livability, does that have to be considered? I think I think it is. I think I think that that's what they'll bring back when, when we get interviewed and, and be able to communicate with them. Yeah, that's what's part of because that. Process. If they're going to do that bypass, they have to start protecting some of that property that it's going to go through, mm -hmm. or it'll, it'll never happen. Yeah, it's too expensive. Right. Yeah. And, so, and part of that is outside the city's ability to do, it's part of the state and the county. And so to get past on those things, we had a workshop on the bypass. It would still need to come back in front of the council to uh, say, go ahead. And then you got to get the county on board. And then the state, and then that way it, it kind of puts it out there mm -hmm. so that you can then just start this process that is 20 mm -hmm. to 40. As I was saying, it, when you do the math, but you have to start. I, yeah. so I, I, I might be that. Yeah. Actually, you know, bypass study. I, mean, I might be 95 years old, but Stan will be ago. governor and he'll push it through. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm just, what I'm saying is those things, you know, we've been working for over 10 years on trying to get a sidewalk just. Up the road, not just looking at ODOT, right? <laughs> in their own right away, right? Right. So, also before I forget, um, I did want to speak to a retail market survey just because that was brought up, and there has been a little bit of confusion on that. Retail market survey is only retail, retail service businesses is all they look at, um, and they look at a lot of consumer spending data. The purpose of a retail market survey is to see what kinds of retail and service businesses um, a community is looking for in the future. What it needs or what it's looking for. Yes, both. So, yeah. they, 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 they do um, they do have stakeholders, well, not really stakeholders groups, they, but they do have public events where they reach out. And that's actually a big part of our, our retail market surveys. What do you want to see here in town? And um, we've gotten some great feedback on that in the past, the last two reports that we've well, you know, been Yeah. yeah. So you know, um, never, we may need to be more still on the bowling alley. But <laughs> we used to have a bowling alley. I know. But that's the, that's the thing to remember about a, a retail market survey. It's just retail and service businesses. That's it. No industrial, nothing, you know, no hospitals, nothing like that. Just retail services. Okay, so to answer the question, are we filling and on online, guys? We don't want to forget you guys in there. Please chime in. Um, that 
we should be going after on this RFP for a 15 year horizon for the things that were discussed or do we have other ideas, opinions on that? I would go for the 15. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So no, yeah, the more it's and sad, Ernie, the more Ernie it you and Chris, you uh, unmuted yourselves. Yeah, I agree. Fifteen uh, would probably be a better, uh, a better uh, path to, to follow. Okay. And I agree as well. Okay. Wow. Okay. We uh, have a consensus. Outstanding. I will make that change. Yeah, and I think you know. I love this group. One one thing I thought I had was with I think twenty is way too long. Yeah. But with the fifteen, if you get done early, you've made enough money. Probably you can do another study early on. Well, yeah, you can do it in 10 years. You, get, you know, 10 years in, you're going to realize what's working and what's not, and you're going to adjust and shift and if you've a, going down a little different path. That if you might have not work one, it, yeah. use that to meet what's three years yeah. out, five years. Okay. That, that opens up a lot more dreaming or chastity for when they do their stuff. So. And, and doing some, like a 15 year one too. I, I've seen them constructed and I could uh, make that uh, RFP reflect this thing. Um, give us some short term and some long term goals. You know, I mean, here's, here's a, here's a 15, for, you know, here's a goal for what do we do in the first three years? And then what do we do, you know, in the 15, full 15 years? So, but that's the great thing about a report like this is they'll give us concrete, achievable steps for every single goal. That, well, and I think, I don't think we can highlight the, Family wage jobs enough. Yeah, yeah. and that, that, really that was something that I almost put in. The more you do that, the more the idea. other fast food jobs will come along because mm -hmm. you're growing the population and they have expendable income. Um, we drive too many people drive way too far to work to support a family. Yeah. But with that, you need to see also the balance of the feeder jobs, the ones like yeah. the fast foods or the yeah. retail or, you know, like yeah, in our business where food. they don't have to make a living wage. It's just extra money that they spend on fluff. That's the money that people are going out to mm -hmm. dinner with or, right. you know, getting the extra little presents or, you know, high schoolers getting their clothes. Yeah, we're cool. adding cool stuff to their You need to <laughs> exactly. birth the grave type of job scenario with the different sizes. And I know Dave um, highlights standing it, and I try not to in, in the group because it speaks for itself. But after losing, losing several employees <laughs> just recently <laughs> in the tech industry, um, where they can go, and you know, one price smartest guy I know, they're going to move to Idaho. He, he needs. Fast internet, found a, you know, he wants to live somewhere outside of Portland. And I've got other people too. They, it's hard to attract why my office, I don't even know where I work. It's hard to attract being on the, just the, right there on the side of Portland because you're part of Portland. Yeah. So I try to attract someone from North Carolina or Montana or, so like, by what I'm saying is these jobs that they're all leaving for, these are high paying jobs. They're leaving to get more money than they're making, you know, high paying jobs. To work 100% at home. 100% mm -hmm. at home. Well, there are more and more and more of these right. as the coronavirus has extended itself. Businesses like Google, Apple, and those guys, um, if people want to move out of those bigger cities and live in communities right next to the mountain. So, what I mean by that is some of those may not even have office buildings in here, but they're contributing to the community right. and the economic side of it to go shopping at the restaurants. And the Right. But what I the, and what interests me about that question is, yeah, that's a that's a fantastic asset to have that the entire city has big fiber. So if you buy a home out here, you can get sandy net and you can work from home. That's not a question you even have mm -hmm. to think about. Um, the question I have is, so how can you then? convince the company to move out here and have, if, if they're going to have an office presence to have that out here too. Um, I think it's what Kurt said in the past. This is a great community to live in. They yeah. want to live in this community. They want to and live, that work, and play here. And they can. And that helps them be able to do multiple yeah. things with that. So. And, and the millennial yeah. generation, that is one of the big yeah, experiences. I mean, we, yeah. we had a whole thing in the fitness industry on these different groups of people and the 
younger people, millennials, they want the, it's all about the experience. Mm -hmm. So they'll stay and live at home until they're 35 and not buy a house, mm -hmm. but they will travel and do all yeah. these other things. So it's all about the experience. And it amazes me that, you know, like Hills Grove can grow so much it has. And here, Sandy, you know, you're 20 minutes to the Clackamas, 20 minutes. I mean, for Sandy River right here, Mount Hood, yeah. I mean, I can go up skiing for half a day. Be up there in 30 minutes. Yeah, those are beach people. We're mountain people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like saying but, that. Have, have you seen the weekends? People going up skiing. Well, I know. I mean, we, I mean, just yeah. So no, it's with the housing expansion, we have a lot of employees that have been trying to move out here but couldn't find a home mm -hmm. affordable. Affordable. Yeah. But now they are. They're buying out, and they love it. Mm -hmm. It's just like their whole. You wouldn't believe talking to them. It's like. Oh my gosh, we went mountain biking after work. Really? I do that all the time. Yeah. You, know, you don't realize what we <laughs> well, have. The other thing right? that right came of COVID is 60% of um, working moms stayed, ended up staying at home, not working because they're homeschooling mm -hmm. or all these other things. Perfect. And they liked it. Yeah. So, what they want is either to work at home or just you know, a little part-time job to make ends meet. I mean, that's kind of one of your feeder jobs. That's, you know, the perfect part-time person for us. So, kids and, need and, and the livability, um, you know, things can mind, you know, where's the big field for the kids to play soccer and mm -hmm. baseball and, and all that. I mean, it really doesn't have it except at the high school. And then if you reserve it, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg. Uh, I'd say midweek about, probably about 30% of our Mom just bring a laptop with them, the whippers yeah. snappers, and they're yeah. working. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're putting in little workstations at the club with uh, the instant charge, quick chargers, and a little table. And really? I'll show my daughter that. Well, I'm curious to see how much that exceeds. That's interesting. We put, we put the first two tables in, and they've got the, you can just put your phone on there, it charges, or it pops up, and you've got like five ports. Okay. And it's a table for one or two people. The high schoolers loved it. They're going nuts. Oh, this is so cool. I'm going to sit here. You know, they're sitting there. They're charging their phone. <laughs> My daughter's 13. She's hanging out there a lot now. I have well, a friend that's a developer in the Forest Grove, Hillsborough area. And he's, they're building, it's a shared office space, mm -hmm. conference rooms for that's all of I'm the businesses about. that have moved to. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. We, we were actually about looking that. where we've got these little bleacher areas and creating that yeah. little thing in the club. So this is kind of the first step to see yeah. what the interest is. We're taking some tables, putting those charging ports in there yeah. and, and so forth, because in fact, we've got food, beer, wine. You can take a break, take a hot tub, go back to work. Yeah, I mean, he he Kelly's have, always in there with his laptop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, Kelly, so he's he's in there twice the a day. Yeah. yeah. So and we're seeing more and more of that. I mean, we already created a, what we call a venture zone, or it's the seven and 12 year olds, and we've got a whole area that where they can do their homework. And we, yeah, we've got free Wi Fi and high speed internet and the whole thing yard. So it makes it convenient for them. Plus, Teenagers like to be around teenagers, and we've just seen that boom mm -hmm. with the COVID because there are fewer places to well, go. Yeah. Hang out. They're too old to hang out with us. And yeah. 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 We had a whole thing on Facebook. You know, hey, the club's overcrowded. It's run overran by teenagers. And people let them, what? You want them out loose on the street? Like, Sorry, yeah, right. the basement smoking <laughs> pot? Give me a break. Yeah, right. Hey, I'll That's take them all. I'll, we'll, we'll take them all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no co working spaces is something that I'm really interested in. I know Jeremy. Yeah, I've, I've been yeah. a few around DC and down in California. And I came back one. This is a perfect town for that, yeah. especially yeah. with our. Well, I've seen a half a dozen of them around work, um, including one that was for food. Yeah. Uh, you know, the commercial kitchen space. And that yeah. was that was oh. neat. Um, you know, gosh, if I, if I was going to invest in something the same, that's what I would do. Ghost kitchen. I was going to say, we, get, we, got, we got some new furniture and stuff we're doing uh, this week, but once we kind of get up and going, I see more people using that. Let that, you know, guys look and say, okay, what would really work? What would what would get you coming to the club on a regular basis and do some work? And <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good question. You know, well, that's coffee what and beer, I think. Oh, we got <laughs> definitely <yeah. pops. laughs> We got some cider. <laughs> No, with beer, I end up falling asleep. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Copy. Yeah. Oh, there you go. We can definitely chat. But I don't want to keep everyone online. I know it's not as 
uh, it's exciting online. Uh, right? <laughs> we have a group in the room, but um, I don't know. Bill looks pretty excited. He looks like he would fall asleep. Bill's about ready to pass out again, but you know, <laughs> yeah. don't mind me. But we do appreciate yeah. it, everyone, and uh, on there, and if nothing else, uh, we can adjourn and and uh, you guys go. We do appreciate it. You have the link. Please review. Yeah. Send yeah. David back comments. Yeah, if you if, seriously, if you guys have any questions about this or any just general thoughts about the RFP, uh, shoot me an email or give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. Okay. And uh, from from the feedback that I've gotten tonight, um, I have a few changes I need to make to that. So um, if you want, um, when I do have uh, all of these all of these couple of changes, but if I get everything incorporated, I'd be happy to send that out to final draft you guys again if you want. But yeah. it's not going to look substantially different from what we've got now. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. Okay. Thank you very much, oh, everyone. Bill is, uh, on. I think he is going to pass out. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Bed, thank you to everybody online. Appreciate well, thank you. Live or die. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.